All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I pray that you have repented and that you were baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord be with you, that he guides you, he protects you, he keeps looking out for you. He comforts you, gives you more strength, and he protects you. He just loves on to you, and that he pours out his spirit all over you. You stay in his presence. I hope that your mental health gets better. I hope that you recover and heal. And I just hope that your situation clears up day by day as well, all right? I hope that you all had a blessed day today, you know? Got to thank God for another day. Got to thank him for everything. Got to thank God for bringing us back to sleep as well, bringing us back safely, coming back home at night, away from all the vices of the world, away from all the troubles, amen? So let us thank the Lord for keeping us away from harm's way, and let us keep praising him every day, okay? Now, today's message, I'm going to continue the book of Exodus reading. All right, we finished chapter 12 yesterday concerning the uh, Passover, all right, and the Lord bringing Israel uh, through Egypt as he promised, amen, and delivering his people, delivering Israel, delivering us out of there, all right? So now we're going to continue word with the book of Exodus, chapter 13 and onward, and then we'll close out prayers, glory to the Most High, and also the priestly blessing at the end, amen? So I know it's a lot going on right now, all, all four corners of the earth, with all tribes, all peoples, all nations, all tongues. But we got to stay patient and hang in there. I know in your personal life, things probably don't make sense to you right now. Things look a little just extra. You probably feel overwhelmed or what have you. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. He cares for you. Take all your anxiety upon him. All right, bring it to the Lord. Amen. So don't, don't. If you feel overwhelmed or a bit, you know, just take some deep breaths and just call on his name. Cry out to him. All right. Some of y'all just need to cry, uh, release those tears and cry out to the Lord. I think a lot of us all need that. You know what I mean? We should never be too cool to call on his name. We should never be too cool to uh, not cry out to him. All right. The Lord sees how vulnerable we can be. He sees all of our strengths, all of our weaknesses. So um, don't be shy when it comes to your problems with the Lord. All right. Give it to him. All right, so let's go through Exodus and go from here, all right? So here we go. The book of Exodus, chapter 13. And the Lord spoke to Moses and saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever open the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out of Egypt, out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no... Laven bread be eaten. The day he came ye out of the month Abib, and it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swore unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven, leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon, the, upon thy hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in my mouth, and thy mouth, for with a strong hand has the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he sworn to thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it to thee, and shall give it thee, that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that comes out of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. And every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou will not redeem it, then thou shalt break, break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son asks thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? By the strength of the hand of the Lord, he brought us out of, from Egypt, from the house of bondage. And it come to pass, and it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beasts. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that opened the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeemed. 
and it shall be for a token upon thy hand, and for frontless between thine eyes. For by strength of hand from the Lord, that the Lord brought us out of Egypt. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up, harassed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sakoth, and they camped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. As you can see here through the book of third book of Exodus chapter 13 reading, you could just see how much God is in control and how he steers Israel and how instead of going to the Philistines way, he leads them by the wilderness. He leads them through the wilderness and he leads them by the way of the Red Sea. So God's path and way is always different from our way. We always want the shortcut or the nearest thing, but God always has a better thing for us. Amen. So it's good just seeing that part of how he delivered his people, how he delivered us. Amen. So what we're going to do is continue the book of Exodus, reading chapter 14, and go from here. All right. So here we go. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before pi Heroth, between Migdol, Migdol and the sea, over against ba baal Zephon, but before Ishal, ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he will that he shall follow after them. And I will honored, I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all the host, all his hosts. And the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captives over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them, encamping by the sea, beside Pihirihoth, and before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, how hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with the, dealt this with us, to carry us out forth, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell them, tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you to this day, today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thy up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on a dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon, I will get my honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten the honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind him. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind him. 
and it came to, between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to, to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after, after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watched the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drove them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fight for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots, and upon the horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were walled to them on their right hand and their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw, saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the, the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. So that is the book of Exodus chapter 14 reading. As, I, as you can see, they are at the Red Sea and Moses, the Lord tells Moses to, you know, put his rod over the sea, over the waters. And the Lord split the Red Sea and Israel was able to be saved through it wall to wall. And they, and they were able to walk on dry land. And then when the Egyptians try to come across the Lord and Moses together, they worked together and really went up against those Egyptians. And that's a beautiful thing. And it's so amazing how the Lord protects us, how he protects his people, how he always gives us a solution and an option and a route to safety in his dwelling place, in his tabernacle, in his presence. God always has a way of rescuing his people. He always has a way of doing it. And this is a clear example of it. Amen. So that's why we, you, you know, in the, in, the, in the gospel, in the new covenant, Jesus talks about do not worry about this and do not worry about that. And you see why, because like God is in control. You know, his protection, his love is amazing. Um, God doesn't leave us hanging. You know what I mean? He is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. So we always have to stay encouraged and never doubt the Lord, never uh, question anything, never have skepticism, never worry, because um, that does nothing for us. You know, the Heavenly Father looks out for his children. Amen. So that's always a beautiful thing to see and to embrace. All right. Now we're going to go to the book of Exodus reading chapter 15. All right, chapter 15. So here we go. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel the song unto the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare for him. I will prepare him in habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host has he cast into the sea. His chosen captives also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths are have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thy excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sensest forth thy, thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as in heap, and the depths of, were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Thou did blow with my wind, the sea covered them, they sank as... Led, lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? 
who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Thou stretched out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto the holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the habits, habitants of Palestina. Palestine. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thy arm, they shall be as still as stone. Till thy people, pa till, till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over, which thou hast, pur hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a trim, a trim, a trim, a tumbril, excuse me, my bad, y'all, a tremble in her hand. And all the women went out after her with trembles and with dances. And Miriam answered them, sing ye to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the city, had thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, of Shuar, and they went th and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals thee. And they came to Elim, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. So there you see, that's the book of Exodus chapter 15. And you can see there that Moses sang a new song. He was praising the Lord. He was rejoicing and singing. And then his sister, um, uh, Miriam, the prophetess, Moses Aaron's sister, Miriam, she also praised the Lord as well. And she was dancing, her and her other friends as well. So it was a beautiful thing to see all the wonders and amazing things that God has done for Israel. So when God does amazing things for you, all you could do is be astonished and amazed and just praise him and sing and dance and just call on him because um, there's no other way to celebrate it. Right. So that's what happened throughout the book of Exodus chapter 15. And then also after they rejoiced and celebrated and praised and danced and sing, um, they also went along the journey. They were in the wilderness for three days and they had issues with thirst. They were dehydrated. They were very thirsty. And they complained and murmured about not being able to drink any water. The waters were bitter and sweet, were bitter. But the Lord provided again. The Lord gave him well waters. He made the water sweet and he blessed them with that. He, he blessed them with that. He quenched their thirst and he looked out for them, you know. So that's why we never worry because God is always in control. God always looks out for us. God knows when we're thirsty, when we're hungry, when we're needing something. And he always provides that. He always fulfills that. Amen. He always fills up our needs, so that's why you shouldn't worry, amen? All right, so what I'm going to do also, and you see how the Lord was reminding his people and charging people and telling him to hearken to his voice and his ways and his statutes and his commandments. All right, and when you read the new covenant, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep the commandments. All right, so the commandments, the laws, and statutes are very important to keep and hold dearly, okay? So what I'm going to do now is read the book of Exodus chapter 16 to continue from there, okay? So here we go. And they took their journey from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. 
And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord is in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. And shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At even then ye shall know that the Lord has brought you out of from the land of Egypt. And in the morning then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he hear your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that you murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord hear your murmurings, which you have murmured against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spoke unto Aaron, saying unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spoke unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, speaking to them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at, e at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay around about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness they lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said, "No one." They said one to another, "It is manna," for they wist not what it was. And Moses said to them, "This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents." And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet with it, with an omer, he gathered much, had nothing over, and he had gathered little, had no, and they had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of the, some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stink. And Moses was angry with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted, and it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers of one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is what this is which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today, and see that you will see, and that which will remain over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And they laid it up until the morning, as Moses bade, and it did not stink. Neither was it was there not any worm therein. And Moses said, "Eat this, eat that today, for that for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none." And it came to pass that there went a that there went out some of the people on the seventh seventh day for it to gather, and they found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See for that the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gave you the sixth day for the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like the coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commandeth, fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you from forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot, and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord, to be kept as for your generations, to be kept for your generations. 
As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an Omer is the tenth part of an Ifaf. Ifha. All right, so that's the book of Exodus chapter 16 reading. So as you can see here, Aaron, Moses, and the Israelites, they all went on long journeys through different parts, through Elim and by Sinai. And the Lord is constantly speaking to Moses, charging the people to take in his orders, respecting the Sabbath day. Um, and the Lord is giving out heaven, I mean, giving out food from heaven. He's giving out manna. He's giving out bread, all those different things. And the Israelites are still a bit stubborn and hard-headed and stiff-necked and rebellious. And the Lord is constantly telling Moses, like, hey, let them keep my Sabbath. Let them keep my commandments. You know, let them trust in me. You know what I mean? So uh, that was the book of, that was chapter 16 reading right there. All right. So I was just God laying, laying out his promises and showing his power and his wonders and always looking out. All right. So what we're going to do is go to the book of Exodus chapter 17 reading. All right. Chapter 17. So here we go. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore, the people did shod with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why shod ye with me? Wherefore, do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is that that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto these people? They be almost ready to stone me. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, smotest the river, take in thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa, Massah, and Mirabah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? <clears throat> then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out of choose choose us out of men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and he fought with Amalek, and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. All right, so as you can see in the book of Exodus chapter 17, reading how the Lord is just bringing Moses, Aaron, and children of Israel together, journey upon journey, encounter upon encounter. And he's constantly looking out for them with thirst and hunger and all their complaints and murmurings. And, and then now you see we get introduced to Joshua. Joshua was a man of valor. He was a man of war. He was an Israelite warrior, and Joshua was about it, about it. <laughs> he was ready for anything. Strong man of God. So as you can see here, Joshua is going to war, and he beat Amalek and the Amalekites all right, with the sword. You know what I mean? And then the Lord told Moses that this is a memorial and that we will always have beef and war with Amale Amalekites, all right? So what we're going to do is continue the book of Exodus chapter 18 reading, chapter 18, all right? The book of Exodus chapter 18, all right? So here we go. 
When Jethro, the priest of Medium, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of the one was Gershon, Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land, and the name of the other was El Eliezer. Eliezer, for the God of my father said he was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And, Pharaoh, and Jethro, <laughs> Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness, where he encamped at the mountain of God. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law, Jethro, have come unto thee, and thy wife and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did obeisance and kissed him. And they asked each other of their well-being and their welfare. And they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake and all the travail that had come upon them by the way and how the Lord delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord has done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who had delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who had delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, for in the thing wherein they dealt proudly, he was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came, and all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning until the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou dost to the people? Why sitteth thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning until evening? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou dost is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it by thyself alone. Hearken now to my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to, to Godward, and thou may bring the cause unto God. And thou shalt... Teach them ordinances and laws, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, heady covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring it to thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee, so then thou shalt be able to endure. And all these people shall all also go out to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers over thousands, rulers over hundreds, rulers over fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. All right, so that's the book of Exodus chapter 18 reading. And it's a nice, beautiful reading because you see Moses' father-in-law with Moses' wives and children come upon, come to Moses and speak to him. They link up. They check on each other's well-being because they've been so far and apart from each other because Moses and Aaron were really on a journey. They were really far and doing God's work and God's business. And uh, his father-in-law heard about everything and wanted to link up with him, catch up with him, you know, and chop it up. So uh, his father-in-law saw all these people just under Moses by himself and he talked to Moses and saying, like, you shouldn't bury it. You shouldn't burden all that all by yourself. That's not good. And it's always important to us as people that when we're doing God's will, we're doing Father's business, we're doing the works, right? We always, ha we always have to help people along the way. We have to help people spiritually, mentally, physically, 
emotionally, financially. We have to help people all throughout our lives, right? But sometimes the problem is sometimes our hearts are too big at times. And sometimes people, you, you kind of get used, you kind of get taken advantage of, or you kind of take too much burdens upon yourself. And when you put too much burdens upon yourself, you end up taking yourself out. You get what I'm saying? That's why you can't just take every single burden that there is because you still have your own issues as well. You still have your own things as well. So there's a balance of how to go about things. So Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, is just schooling him and telling him, like, hey, man, you should appoint some people and arrange it and administrate it a certain way. So that way it could be balanced out and better because you can't just have hundreds of thousands of people just all up under you. You can't handle a 100,000 people burdens like that. He, you know, so it's great to see his father-in-law speak that into him. And then from then, that point on, Moses was able to hire people and to appoint people and to position people to rule. You get what I'm saying? So that's the po- that's the purpose of leadership is to also empower others as well. All right. And to make other leaders as well. OK, so it's always important how we administrate everything for God. You know, we're not just, you know, his children and lights of the world and salts of the earth. We're administrators. You know what I mean? We're rulers. We're administrators. We're a royal priesthood. We arrange things. You know what I mean? We set the tone. We set things. We we, we put out order and establishment. We put out decency and structure. All right. And that's how God made us to be. All right. So that's how we have to apply that into our personal lives with how we going about father's business, you know, and dealing with others as well. You know what I mean? So you know, we should really, really take that lesson and add it to our personal lives. So it's very beautiful. So I'm going I'm to wrap it up from here, all right? And then we'll continue the book of Exodus, chapter 19, 20, and so on, and so on, where it gets into the law, and commandments. We're going to go more into that reading as well. And that's that, all right? So I hope that you all had a real blessed day, and I hope that you all just keep staying strong out here in these times that we're in, because there's so much going on that... People just get a little confused and depressed and all that, but you have to hang in there and stay strong, okay, people? You have to stay firm. You have to be steadfast, and you have to stay obedient to the Lord, all right, no matter what, all right? So what I would love to do as I close out is give all the glory to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and praise His only begotten Son who died for our sins, amen? All right, so here we go. Yes, he is the hope for humanity. He is the last Adam, the second Adam. He is the advocate, the almighty, the alpha and omega. Amen. Amen. The apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessed only potent, the blessed only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation. The chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, wonderful counselor, the government rests on his shoulders, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father. Yes, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, amen, every tongue shall proclaim who he is, the faith and true witness, the faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, King Eternal, the King of Israel. Amen. He is the King of Kings. Hallelujah. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hosanna, Hosanna, the King of Saints, the King of Ages, King of the Jews, the King, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the Lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the law giver. Make straight way for the Lord. Amen. Yes, he is the leader and commander. He is the sustainer. Yes, he is the sufficient one. He is the name above all names. Amen. His name is above all names. The life, the leader, commander, the light of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Yahweh, Ahai, Yeshai, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Elohim. Yes, the consuming fire, the father of lights, the father of the fatherless. Amen. Yes. He is the Lord of all, the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords, the man from heaven, the man of sorrows, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, 
the only begotten Son of God, our great God and Savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice, the Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the revelation, the revelator. Yes, the radiant one, the perfect example. Yes, he is the res the resurrector. He is the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon. The ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shalom, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. Yes, he is the way. Amen. He is the way, truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of Yah, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Elohim, the word of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, the word of Yahweh Shai. He is the word of life. He is the word. Amen. We touch and agree. We serve an awesome creator, and the Son is amazing for dying for our sins. Amen. In the authority, in the power, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are redeemed, renewed, restored, healed. You are loved. You are favored. All right. The Lord loves you. You are born again. You have a new mind and a new Christ. You have a new heart. You have a new soul. You have new hands. You have new path, new footsteps. You have a new establishment. You have new friends and new hobbies, a new routine in Jesus' name. You have a new way of looking at things. Amen. You're not leaning on your own understanding anymore. You're, you're acknowledging God all your ways from now on. Amen. You're trusting the Lord from now on. Amen. You're walking by faith and not by sight anymore. Amen. Amen. So there you have it, y'all. All right. Yes, yes. We serve an awesome creator. And it sounds amazing for dying for our sins. We have to embrace that every day. Every day. Amen. You got to think about everything the Lord brought you through. He really kept us. He, he really kept us. Amen. So that's why we got to praise him so hard, you know. So there you have it. All right. That's the book of Exodus. That's the book of Exodus reading. All right. So what I would love to do is the priestly blessing and then go from there. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. All right. Amen. Shalom. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life well for the most high. I pray that you repent and have new beginnings. And I just pray that your life turns around for the better, and that you keep the Lord first for the rest of your life. I'm Jarvis Kings. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.